Today on Be Something Wonderful, we answer one of the biggest questions about reality creation ever. How do I feel what I haven't yet experienced in 3D reality? I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I had a big session yesterday, and this client asked a question that many of you have asked on the board, uh, on the channel, and in sessions. And the question was, Tom, what he asked me, he said, Tom, how do I feel my wish fulfilled if I haven't experienced it yet? How do I feel something that I haven't had the experience in 3D reality yet? Well, guys, we're gonna talk about this today and more. To start, I want to start with the teachings of Dr. Joe Dispenza. I'm going to paraphrase some things. I'm going to quote them. Plus, we're going to add in our own mix of thoughts and ideas on this. We're really going to unpack this and more. So, Dr. Joe asked this question. He says, how do I feel the feeling of an experience that I haven't had yet? What does Dr. Joe says? He says, the key feeling or emotion that, that you feel when you begin to have feedback from your experience of 3D reality, that what you are creating within is producing an effect outside of you. He says this feeling is a love for life, a joy for existence, a deep sense of gratitude. Do you hear this? Look at what Dr. Joe is saying here. One thing I like that he says, experience. We talked about that in our last video. On the, on the membership channel. The idea that it's not really about I create my own reality, it's I experience reality. And so it's about choosing that experience by your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. So I like this. He says the key here is that when you, the key is that the emotion that you feel, when you begin to live your ideal dream, when you begin to live your wish fulfilled, what's the feeling? When, when you start creating, when, when whatever you're creating within, that inner state, that it starts showing without, in the outside world, what's the feeling that you have? You have a love for life, a joy for existence, a real deep sense of gratitude. This is what he says. He, but then he goes on to say that most of us are waiting, waiting for the events to change, waiting for 3D reality to change, so we can feel this joy for existence, this love for life, this deep sense of gratitude. Right? And he says, it's not about waiting, it's about creating. And I like that. But as you know, we've gone a step further. So I'd even go further with that and say that waiting is creating. So it's true what Dr. Joe says, that, that either you're waiting or creating. But even let's go further because you're always creating. So waiting is creating. And what are you creating? You're creating a, a reality of waiting waiting for what you want. You're creating a reality of your current manifested reality and waiting for that, that wish, waiting for that dream. Do you see it? The emo and here's what he says, the emotional signature of gratitude means that something has already happened. So now he's talking about what gratitude means, the joy, the love for life, the steep sense of gratitude. He's saying the emotional signature Right? The, 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 the electromagnetic signature of gratitude means that something has already happened. Right? It's magnetic. You give thanks when you are given uh, something or have been given something or are receiving something or have received something. This is what he's saying. That signature of gratitude represents means that you've been given something or, or, or something has happened where you feel gratitude for. You've received something or you're going to receive something. That's what that signature of gratitude indicates or implies. Do you see what he's getting at? So you want to get at that feeling, right? So let's uncover this a little bit more. Spending, the, and this is what Dr. Joe says, spending the majority of your time waiting and not creating, right? But then again, I went further and said that waiting is creating, but it's creating a reality that you don't want. It's not your chosen reality. It's not the experience you want. Waiting for something on the outside to change, to feel the love, the joy, and gratitude for life on the inside. We're in this waiting mode, right? Feeling a separate, and this is what he says, feeling a separation or a polarity from what you want. I love that he uses the word polarity. We've talked about that in a few videos. You're feeling a separation or a polarity from what you want. 
So you try harder to force and manipulate reality to try to make something happen. Do you see it? You're feeling this separation. You're not feeling gratitude. You're not feeling a joyful life. You're not feeling light on your feet. You're waiting for something to happen so you can get to that good feeling of gratitude, that joy, that love for life, right? But waiting is creating. Remember, right? Creating more wanting and more of what you don't want. In fact, you're just creating more waiting, right? Instead, this is what Dr. Joe says, have a clear intention or what we call a pure intention or pure desire. Choose your desire. Remember, instead of desiring your desire, choose your desire. Have that intention. Joe, Dr. Joe says it, a clear intention. I talk about choosing your desire or that pure intention or a pure desire plus the elevated emotion. What's an elevated emotion? Gratitude, joy, a love for life, right? What Dr. Joe calls elevated emotions are emotions that don't require anything from the outside to feel them. That's powerful. That's an elevated emotion, right? They're not conditioned, right? So, and, and this is what he says, an elevated emotion, love, joy, gratitude for life or existence is a heart-centered emotion. These emotions are above polarity. Do you see it? They're above the ups and downs and the, and the, and, and the in and outs <laughs> and the good and bads, right? And the highs and lows. They're above polarity. It's the center of unity, of wholeness, of oneness. It's coming from that God center, coming from that I am center, coming from the center of your being. It's above polarity. It, 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 it doesn't have the quality of polarity. It's heart centered. It's coming from the center of your being. And your center of the being is the center of the universe, right? Because it's infinity. And you're a, you're a, remember, you're an individualized aspect or center of that intelligent mind, the divine mind of God. That means you're in the middle of everything, right? This is, the, and this is what Dr. Joe says. This is the union of opposites or our bridge to the quantum field. He calls that feeling, those emotions, those elevated emotions of joy, gratitude, love for life, love for just being as the bridge to the quantum field, or in other words, the God field or the intelligent mind or that substance of all that is, right? That God substance. When you feel a heart-centered emotion, you're falling in love with life. I love that. That's what Dr. Joe, when you feel a heart set, you're falling in love with life. When you fall in love with life, life falls in love with you, right? These elevated emotions are felt, and this is a big point. So here is his point here. These elevated emotions are felt in the body. Your body, and this is what he says, your body functions via the subconscious mind. He even says the body is the subconscious mind, right? The body functions via the subconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between emotions created by an actual physical experience and those felt in your thoughts or imagination. Do you get it, guys? Just, we talked about the, what the, how the subconscious works or consciousness. It doesn't know the difference. Your body, which is run by the subconscious, which is primarily, it's a manifestation, but, it, but it, it's directed by the subconscious. We talked about all your bodily functions. So when, when your body feels it, you, you feel it, you're becoming it. Do you hear it? You're becoming it when your body feels it, right? And, and here's the difference. Your body doesn't know the difference between what you conjure <laughs> or what you're actually, uh, the emotions that you're feeling as a, an effect of an experience. Do you get it? That's big. So let's hit this a little bit more. You believe what you feel. I've talked about this, right? You believe what you feel. So this is in line with what Dr. Joe's saying. Your body is believing and living in that future reality in the present moment. That's what Dr. Joe says. Remember, we've always talked about that you believe your feelings. You believe what you feel. You believe what you feel in your body. Your body is believing and living in the future reality in the present moment. When? When you feel gratitude, right? When you feel that love for life or the opposite when you're feeling frustration, when you're feeling irritation, when you're feeling hate. Now you're creating, yes, you're, you're creating a future, but not the future you want. Do you see it? It works both ways. Once you are feeling gratitude in the heart center, that center produces a frequency, a magnetic field or vibrational energy. But remember, positive emotions, elevated emotions of love and joy and gratitude are much more powerful than lower level emotions, 
right? And they direct lower level emotions. So you just got to get pointed in that direction, right? Point to God and God comes running to you, right? Once you feel the gratitude in the heart center, that center produces a frequency, a magnetic field, a vibrational energy. Remember, the heart center is powerful. Everything's energy. It produces that, that magnetic field, right? When you combine that intention, choice or thought of your wish fulfilled, right? Your desire, that's electric, right? The electric magnetic field is created, right? With that frequency, with the frequency or the magnetic frequency of your heart or that emotion, you're broadcasting your desired future into the quantum field. You're broadcasting that frequency and you're feeling it in your body. You're becoming it. You become the, mag you become the magnetic um, being for what you desire. Your body's becoming it. So you're becoming it. You must, then that reality, you don't, have to, you don't have to move. That reality comes to you, right? You become that reality. You're collapsing time and space, making the elsewhere here in the future now, as Neville Goddard says, right? The opposite is also true though, right? The, if you're in frustration, if you're in irritation, if you're in regret, if you're in hate, you're in the past, Right? So you're not, you're, 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 you're creating a future based on the past instead of a future based on the present moment of living in that joy, in that existence, in that joy of being. Wow, that's powerful. So let's, uh, let's really hit this today. So let's get a background here. Let's get a base for what we're talking about. Remember, focus with feeling, with Dr. Joe saying, with those elevated feelings, right? on the version of yourself in reality as you desire or choose it to be, regardless of the current manifested reality, that's what creates your wish fulfilled. Focus on the, on the version of yourself with feeling and reality as you desire or choose it to be, regardless of current manifested reality or 3D conditions. Remember, those are the past, right? You're, as you feel that in your body, as, you, as, as that thought and intention joins with that heart-centered, elevated emotion of gratitude, of joy for living, of joy for existing, as that, that creates an electromagnetic signature that's sent out, that appears with, throughout the quantum field and draws to you your desired future, right? All possibilities exist in, in, in invisible form, in potential visible form. All possibilities exist. All of it is in potential. It all exists. It's all out there, but it's invisible, right? Here's the key. The current version of yourself in 3D reality is one of those possibilities still existing in potential form on the invisible plane. So you're looking around at 3D reality, but that behind that 3D reality, it, it's still potential. Do you hear this? It's not fact. It's still in potential form. So it changes when you change within. As Dr. Joe says, when you become it, it changes, right? So that current version of three, yourself a 3D reality is still potential form. It's your focus. What determines it? Your focus. Your focus determines whether you see and perceive it or not. And what determines your focus? What you're feeling and believing and thinking, right? Because you focus on what you believe. You focus on what you feel. Wow. That's powerful. So I just want to make a point, merely noticing, and this discussion came up yesterday in one of our sessions, merely, no, merely noticing the current 3D conditions is not focusing on them, but, but trying to change them through mental or physical force and manipulation is. Hear this. So it's not about just noticing those conditions is not the problem. It, you're not focusing on them, but trying to change them, to, trying to manipulate them. Now you're reinforcing them. You reinforce your experience of an undesired reality that you've labeled undesired. Remember, we talked about it. Don't, don't even label them. Just label it a reality that you no longer choose, a reality that you no longer agree with. You accept it as one quantum possibility but you no longer choose. It's no longer your choice as opposed to undesired, right? But when you, when you do this, when you try to force it, when you go through mental gymnastics, trying to make something happen, you're making it more real and solid. That reinforces the beliefs and assumptions, the limiting beliefs and assumptions. They're limiting because it's no longer what you desire. It's no longer your choice. It's limited by definition 
because it's no longer what you want to represent as yourself and reality, right? So, so your beliefs that, that created it. So you're, you're, so you're making it more solid. You're, you're reinforcing the beliefs, the assumptions, and feelings that created it. Or in other words, you, you in other, or in other words, brought the unseen potential into focus. You keep bringing that unseen potential into focus. Remember that 3D manifested reality is still potential behind it. And as you keep focusing on it, you keep bringing that unseen potential into reality. In other words, you keep projecting it, right? Focusing is creating. Yeah. So let's hit it a little bit more. Reacting is creating. Complaining is creating. Criticizing is creating. All of that's creating and waiting is creating. All of it is creating something that you no longer choose. So you're looking at a 3D reality and versus accepting it, but not agreeing with it and deciding to choose. Remember, accepting it's one thing. That, that, accepting it's bringing it back into the field of potential. Then you decide that you don't agree with it anymore. That's okay. Now you agree to choose a different reality. So accepting it is not agreeing with it. That's different, right? But when you're reacting to it, you're, you're agreeing with it, that that is your reality. When you're complaining about it, you're agreeing with it. When you're criticizing it, you're agreeing with it, even though you think you're not. You're making it more solid. You focus on and believe in what you react to. You focus on and believe in what you complain about. You focus on and you believe in what you criticize. So big. You take it for granted that it's real and that this current manifested reality is unacceptable. Do you hear this? I want to talk about this idea of taking something for granted because it, it can work both ways. It can be a powerful way to, to, to create your desired reality or in other words, experience your desired reality or a, a powerful way to stay in a reality that quote, you don't choose anymore. Take, you take it for granted, right? You take it for granted, you criticize, complain, you take it for granted in, in that it's unacceptable and you agree with it as an undesired and unacceptable reality. And that's what keeps it real. Got to bring it back into that field of, of potential, right? You are feeling ungrateful. You're feeling unappreciative and you're feeling thankless. You're feeling the thankless reality. Do you hear it? It's the opposite of the elevated emotions that, that Dr. Joe Dispenza was talking about, right? You take it for granted that it's real. Then you just complain and criticize and react to it, right? You say it's unacceptable. You don't agree, and then you say you don't agree with it, but you do agree with it because you're doing all that. That's agreement. You're, you're agreeing with that undesired reality that it's unacceptable. And then you just feel ungrateful, unappreciative, and just for that thankless reality. Do you hear this? <laughs> so big. So instead, what do you do instead? Well, let's talk about that. Instead, accept the current manifested reality as one quantum possibility out of an infinite number of potential unseen realities in the quantum field. Because it is. Because it's still unseen. Even though it's seen, behind it is the unseen energy. Right? View it from the higher vantage point that, is no longer, that, that it is no longer your choice versus labeling it as unwanted, undesired, or bad. Do you see that? You're going to take the vantage point of who you really are. The vantage point of that higher you. That, that more wise, that wiser you, that greater you, the, your inner being, right? You accept it as a potential, but you no longer agree with it as your experience of reality. That's big. Wow. Hear this, right? You, you accept it as potential, but you no longer agree with it as your experience of reality. You're choosing again. Whew. Do you hear the power of accepting but not agreeing with it anymore? There's no resistance in that. You can feel the gratitude of who you are, right? You now take your new reality for granted, right? So now take your new reality, your wish fulfilled for granted. Feel the gratitude. Feel, feel the joy that it's yours, right? With love and appreciation and, all the, and for all the potential in your freedom to choose. Feel the gratitude that, that you can take that reality for granted because it's within you and it's yours. Feel the gratitude because you're a creator. Feel the appreciation for existing on this planet to be able to do this. Feel that joy for living, for life. Match your will to the divine will. Wow. 
That's big. So take for granted means, this is what take for granted means. We, I know we give it a negative connotation. He or she or them or that or my company or whatever is taking me for granted. Right? Again, complaining is creating, right? Criticizing, creating. Take for granted means assume that something is true without questioning it. Just like you assume the current 3D reality is what it is. And, you, and it's undesired and you don't like it. And it's unacceptable. You're taking that for granted. Instead, take your wish fulfilled for granted. Take what you really want in your life for granted because that is true. And, it, and you don't have to question, you are a creative center of the universal divine mind. Therefore, you are at the center of the infinite number of potential realities, all realities, you are the center. Infinite intelligence expresses itself, its infinite power, its infinite intelligence, its infinite presence through you. But only, hear this, this is big, but it expresses itself through you, but only to the degree you recognize it through increased self-awareness. In other words, as you become more aware of it, it becomes more aware of you. Do you see this? And as you become less aware of it, it becomes less aware of you. Why? Because you're one with it, right? That, that divine mind, that, 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 that intelligent mind, it, it experiences reality through you. It experiences itself, it gets to know itself through you as a divine center. Right? So when you start recognizing it, when you point in that direction, just like the prodigal son, when you point towards God, God comes running to you. Wow, that's big. So the more you identify your mind with the mind of God, the universal mind, infinite intelligence, the more the universal mind identifies itself with your mind. It's mutual. It's mutual, unconditional love. Wow. So, and this is from the prodigal son. So he got up. This is when the son comes back, blows all his inheritance, comes back. And he says, so he got up and came to his father. Look at the words here, it says in scripture, in Luke 15, 20. It said, so he got up and came to his father. They use the verb came, not went to his father, came to his father, which means what? It implies that he never left. Wow, that he's one with the father. Do you see the, the verb difference there? It didn't say he got up and went to his father like there's separation between you and, and, and that unconditioned consciousness, between you and the divine mind. There's no separation. That's what scripture's pointing out here. That's big. I might have pointed this out in private lessons, uh, previous lessons. I don't know, but he got up and came to his father. You're not separated. Right? It's co you're coming to yourself. You're coming to your own self. You're merging with your own self. You're the infinite being that you are, right? But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion. So even if, quote, you're a long way off in thought, you still feel like you're a long way off in, in your state of being, right? You're not, it doesn't matter. Just point to, towards that intelligent mind. Be more self-aware. Go in that point in that direction and God comes running to you. That mind starts coming to you, right? Because you never left. Wow. And he felt the compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. I love it. Prodigal son. Remember, got up, rise in self, awareness and consciousness, right? To get up is to rise in consciousness or increase your self-awareness of who you are, your self-knowing. Came, meaning that you're already there. You, don't, you were never separated, right? You're coming on to yourself. Compassion means no judgment, no condemnation, unconditional love, period. Wow, that's powerful. That is a powerful lesson. That is how to feel what you haven't yet experienced in 3D reality. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. That's a totally open group, it, but it's private as well. So it's open to new members but it's private once you join. So you're only communicating, giving guidance and insight or asking for guidance and insight or sharing stories with other members. So that's a totally open group. You can also follow us on, um, also on the Facebook page at Be Something Wonderful or Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. 
And guys, keep in mind, the Facebook page was really, uh, the ambassadors is really an answer to sharing uh, questions among yourself. I know a lot of you are not members of Facebook and have asked me, Tom, do you post questions on the community board anymore? Did, it's because things have, we're delightfully overwhelmed, right? With, with everything's popping and, and, we're, and, and we're really having fun and we're really busy, but it's, but it's no longer um, practical for us to, to be able to post those questions. It, maybe in the future, we're gonna figure out a way that you can ask questions among yourselves. And maybe it is part of the community board when we have a bigger team. But right now, you can go to Facebook. Other than that, just post your questions on the, under the video, under the normal channel, and then, and then I'm sure the other members will answer. Guys, uh, until next time. <laughs> with great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude, this is Tom. See you soon.